For this tutorial we need read switch, a 220 ohm and a 100 ohm resistor, LED, multimeter, battery, breadboard, Arduino Nano, magnet and few connecting cables. Read switch was invented in 1936 by Walter B. Elwood in the Bell Telephone Labs. Read switch consists of a pair of ferromagnetic flexible metal contacts, typically nickel iron alloy as they are easy to magnetize and doesn't stay magnetized for long, separated by only few microns coated with hard wearing metals such as rhodium or ruthenium to give them a long life as they switch on and off in an airtight glass envelope. The glass tube consists of an inert gas, typically nitrogen, or in the case of high voltage, it's just a simple vacuum. Since the contact of reed switch are sealed away from the atmosphere, they are protected against atmospheric corrosion. The hermetic sealing of the reed switch makes them suitable for use in explosive atmospheres where tiny spark from conventional switches would constitute a hazard. A reed switch has very low resistance when closed, typically as low as 50 milliohms. Hence, a reed switch can be said to require zero power to operate it. When a magnet is brought in close proximity to the contacts, an electromechanical force field is generated and the stiff nickel iron blades become magnetically polarized and gets attracted to each other, completing the circuit. When the magnet is removed, the switch returns to its open state. Using a multimeter, I'm going to show you how a read switch works. When I bring a magnet close to the switch, the multimeter shows a continuity as the contact touches each other, completing a circuit. When the magnet is removed, the switch returns to its normally open state. There are three basic types of read switches. Single pole, single throw, normally open. Single pole, single throw, normally closed and single pole double throw where one leg is normally closed and one is normally open which can be used to alternate between two circuits. Although most read switches have two ferromagnetic contacts, some have one contact that's ferromagnetic and one that's non-magnetic. While some like the original Elwood's read switch have three. They also vary in shapes and sizes. Let's first test the read switch without an Arduino. Connect a LED in series with the read switch to a battery. When a magnet is brought in close proximity to the contacts, the LED lights up when the nickel iron blade inside the switch attracts each other, completing the circuit. And when the magnet is removed, the switch returns to its open state and the LED turns off. Now let's connect the read switch to an Arduino. Connect the LED to pin number 12 of Arduino. Then connect the read switch to pin number 13 and ground the other end. We also need a 100 ohm pull-up resistor connected to the same pin to allow a control flow of current to the digital input pin. If you want, you can also use the internal pull-up resistor of Arduino for this setup. The code is very simple. Set the pin number 13 as read pin and pin number 12 as LED pin. In the setup section, set the pin mode of read pin as input and LED pin as output. And finally, in the loop section, turn on the LED when the read pin goes low. Same as before, when a magnet is brought in close proximity to the contacts, the LED lights up and when the magnet is removed, the switch returns to its open state and the LED turns off. Another widespread use of read switch is in manufacturing of read relays. In a read relay, the magnetic field is generated by an electric current flowing through an operating coil which is fitted over one or more read switches. The current flowing in the coil operates the read switch. These coils often have many thousands of turns of very fine wire. When the operating voltage is applied to the coil, a magnetic field is generated which in turn closes the switch in the same way the permanent magnet does. Compared to armature based relays, read relay can switch much faster as their moving parts are small and lightweight. They require very less operating power and have lower contact capacitance. Their current handling capacity is limited but with appropriate contact material, they are suitable for dry switching applications. They are mechanically simple, offer high operating speed, good performance with very small currents, highly reliable and have long life. Millions of read switches were used in the telephone exchanges in the year 1970s and 1980s. Just about everywhere you go, you'll find a read switch nearby that's quietly doing its job. Read switches are so pervasive that you'll probably never more than a few feet away from one at a given time. Some of the areas of application are in burglary alarm system, read switches put your laptop to sleep hibernation when the lid is closed, fluid level sensors, speed sensors in bike and DC motors, in the spinning arm of dishwasher to detect when they jam, they keep your washing machine from running when the lid is open, in thermal cutoffs in electric showers to stop water heating to a dangerous level, they know if the car has enough brake fluid and whether or not your seat belt is fastened. They are also used in applications which make use of their extremely low leakage of current. Old keyboards, in vehicles, industrial systems, household appliances, telecommunication, medical appliances and more. 
On the relay side, they are used for automatic cut sequences. The mechanical motion of reed switch is below the fatigue limit of materials. So, reed switch do not break due to fatigue. Wear and life are almost entirely dependent on electric load effect on the contacts along with the material of the reed switch. Contact surface wear occur only when the switch contacts open or close. Because of this, manufacturer rate life in number of operations rather than hours or years. In general, higher voltage or higher current cause faster wear and shorter life. The glass envelope extends the life and can be damaged if reed switch is subject to mechanical stress. They are cheap, they are durable and depending upon electric load, they can last for about a billion articulations. Thanks again for watching this video. I hope it helps you. If you want to support me, you can subscribe to my channel and watch my other videos. Thanks. See you again in my next video. Bye now.